enter Libya through um, one of my brother friend. We bring a um, person come. He tell me say the person they carry people go it And you know so nobody will want to hear about it. They will not go happy to go. And uh, the way the person they talk to me, it motivate me to say, oh yeah, today today, mm, just enter road. They go. As humans, we're born with innate abilities to dream, pursue our dreams, and make the most of our opportunities if we have the chance to attempt greatness on our own terms. The victims want a better life, a right guaranteed by both natural and all known laws. No one should make them see otherwise on the account of his or her own greed. As Virginia Woolf Orlando said, he who robs us of our dreams robs us of our life. I was told by a friend, that I was to go to school abroad and get a job and all of that. That was I was taken to Jemi. On reaching Jemi, it was more of um, you have to choose either sex exploitation or sex slavery or carrying of drugs. According to a UNESCO report, human trafficking is the third most common crime in Nigeria after drug trafficking and economic fraud. Estimates released by the Global Slavery Index in July 2018 indicates that there are 40.3 million victims of modern slavery worldwide, out of which 71% are women and girls, and 25% are children. Came to our compound, met my mother. I was not telling my mom about a uh, outside country. He uh, would like me to go and stay with her over there. I will make much money in like two months or so. I will come back and uh, get some things, build house for my mother. As at 2016, Nigerians accounted for about 21% of the total 181,000 migrants arriving into Italy through the Mediterranean Sea. United Nations International Organization for Migration, IOM, further reports that as of December 2020, there were approximately 570,000 migrants in Libya, of which Nigerians represented approximately 6%. Between July 2003 and December 2019, National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, has rescued a total of 14,688 victims of human trafficking. Nigeria remains a source, transit, and destination country for human trafficking activities. According to the United Nations, human trafficking can be defined as Art of recruitment, transportation, harboring of a person through the means of deceit, through the means of fraud, deception, and using the position of a person for vulnerability, basically for the purpose of exploitation. And when we are looking at exploitation, we are looking at Exploitation, which could be sexual exploitation, labor exploitation, and all variants of human trafficking of child abuse and the rest. 500,000 will be say, they will tell me, say, I will pay for Nigeria. When I reach, I go pay times two. And uh, which is, uh, um, the person will be say, I pay the, I pay almost one million giver. The house when I stay, I pay one million giver. Because why? Well, um, let me as you say, a month, say maybe I work 500,000. And the person will carry, will get me, will buy me, he will get 250. One person will me, they stay for he has they work the money, he will get 250. I could give an example of maybe someone who wants to be a house help. For example, that person um, is free to be a house help in Nigeria if she has reached the age of accountability and the age the, that, you know, is legally acceptable. But what will be the exploitation or the human trafficking part of it will be that that person earns the pay but is not given the pay. 
So the pay is being spent by someone else and the person keeps working. So that person was brought in, transported from where she was to come and be a house help, but is being exploited. And that's, that's already a case for trafficking. We have the internal trafficking and we have the external trafficking. The internal trafficking is trafficking within Nigeria as a whole, interstates, local governments, cities and all. And we have the external trafficking of moving victims from within Nigeria outside international borders. For the act of human trafficking to take place, three elements must be fulfilled and they are the act, the means and the purpose. Under the act, there is act of recruitment, transportation, harbor, you know, purchase of that individual. Under the means, we have um, deception as a means. We have coercion as a means. We have death bondage as a means. Then the final um, element is the purpose, which is exploitation. The story of human trafficking and forced migration will be incomplete without the trafficker, who is the chief mastermind. One then begins to wonder what his motivations are. An average human trafficker is a human being like you and I. Sometimes when they are apprehended and you get the weight of evidence off them, you are alarmed because you wonder why a human being would do these evil acts to his or her fellow human being. So I think there's nothing spectacular about how a trafficker looks and how they act. So the, these traffickers are not, um, they are not spirits, they are not ghosts. They are still people around us. Some of them are family members, our friends. We have a family friend whom my mom supported when she had nobody to take care of her. So when she came to visit, she saw I was making hair and I was perfecting it. She now told my mom that if I should go outside the country, I will make money with the hair I'm making. My mom now supported it. So she walked my paper and took me out. On getting there, she welcomed me very well. After the welcome, she asked me to strip myself naked. When I stripped myself, she now said, like, this is what the white men are looking for. I don't understand what she was saying back then. So. She took me out, bought some sexy things, clothes for me. She now took me to a club that this is where I'll be working. I was like, I'll be making hair for the girls. She said, no, that the way they had, that is how I will look like. Several factors have been identified to aid the activities of the trafficker, which has lured many young people into forced migration and human trafficking. All our will be so okay. the the carriers they will go. At the moto drive, 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 I said, look, I reach Niger. We reach Niger now. And then one of us called, asked the master, oh God, where you call the carriers they go? We know they reach, where you want for a car play. Let the man call laugh. Because when this one was, when we did so, in Libya, then we did go. Let the man call tell us, say, any of us we want us, we won't go back from here now. All the money will be say in those spend. We go have to pay. And everybody will not know where the carriers pass. We not get money. We be say in those spend. So because of the pressure where the ma put they put for her body, we can say okay. Since it be like that, more years bear and since we already start the journey. When we are talking about the factor, for, for us in NAPTIP, we they are what we can call the influencers of human trafficking. And for us, we look at it as the pull and the push factors. And when we are looking at the pull factor, we are looking at those preponderances that are internal to make somebody to be trafficked. Factors that make them leave their state of origin. First is unemployment. People are not employed in this country. Majority of our youths are not employed. So they tend to migrate to look for greener pastures. That's one factor. 
And then I would also say poverty. Poverty, poverty is creeps into um, wanting to to seek help from other people. So in the midst of um, wanting to seek help, there's that um, place of wanting to do anything just because the person is poor. We have a family of 10. The father is a farmer, the wife is a trader. Children are there, they can barely eat. So those kind of people, can, when the trafficker comes and look at those vulnerable families, they can quickly give out their children for them to be trafficked. Then you have a family pressure. When family members, they look at their mates or they look at their pairs and say they can't start comparing their wars with other youngsters that have made it in quotes. They don't even know how they have got it needs and all that. They can be making instances of fine buildings in Benin. So you see your mates, they were the one that erected this building. So I can't be here while you are still with me eating. So you need to feed for yourself. So you have family pressure. Some of them go as far as selling their farmlands, inheriting buildings for their wars to travel on this journey or to be trafficked. Issues of greed, issue of disposition of the victims that I want to go. I want to go. I want to go and hustle. I want to go and make money. Then in the area of greed, you look at it that a certain member of a family has been promised financial reward. And because of that financial reward, because of that his own greed, he will do anything to make sure that that girl, that boy is taken out from the parent. And then when you now look at the other factors, the, 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 the push factors, we'll be looking at factors like the high demand for illicit sex. The growth in the entertainment industry. The high rate of currency. Because when these people are, when these girls, small girls and boys are taken away, they want to make their money in dollar, they want to make their money in euro and all the rest. You can never match the rate of exchange of euro and dollar with our Nigerian money. You have perceived opportunity elsewhere. They, they all perceive that it would be better if I leave this country. Then again, you have political and social stability. Good health care system, good welfare system, you know, employment and all that. They are also not clear about what they also want. Of course, livelihood opportunities. So traffickers understand what family want to hear. Traffickers understand what community want to see. So they come in with flashy cars, come, come in with all kinds of big promises. And because they are familiar with this family, they already know what to tell these families. So they, they lure them. First they can say, okay, because you are a young person, if you, are into, you, are, if, you have, if you have skills in football or in sports, they use sports. If you are a young person who is very beautiful, they use um, uh, modeling as a tool to lure you to say, okay, there are better lives, there are better opportunity. Of course, uh, inflation is also part of it. You'll be looking at globalization as also a factor. So a lot of things are combined. Then you also look at the role our juju play, people play, the role our juju priests play, because psychologically, they have changed the mental orientation of our victims so that they can be able to take them out. And the essence of this juju or taking oath is that they actually want to get their cooperation so that when their madam take them out, they will be able to pay him or pay her whatever is the amount that he has said they are going to pay her. If you don't have a, a, a family or a child abroad, it's seen, it is seen as if your, your family is not progressing. So, the, so that, that brings the urge to want to, the, 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 the child to go to travel out at all costs. Social media has been identified as an enabler. In addition, the actions of some parents, juju priests and law practitioners also aid the activities of the traffickers. Social media is also used as a tool of recruiting victims. It's, they also use it to proliferate their human trafficking operations in Nigeria and even impersonating victims in spreading lies 
and rumors about greener pastures. Okay, take for instance these days, how job offers do strive across social medias concerning uh, in, in Dubai, Oman, and other Middle East countries, where they advertise job offers that we do not know if it actually exists. And this job offers attracts our youth to embark on this journey. Some of them, when they get there, they get trapped. It's either they are trafficked or their organ is harvested or even subjected to forced labor or domestic servitude. When you go on um, social media these days, you find that, that so many youth tend to pour out their problems on social media. And like, like you find some saying, I need cash, I need this and all that. In the, in the verge of getting help, they find themselves being trafficked. Youth are mainly the one of, rather the targets, children and women inclusive, are targets of traffickers. So social media actually has really, really helped most of these traffickers to get their victims. We have seen people who have been trafficked and are suffering abroad in those countries. Taking pictures, you know, painting that all was well with them, sending it on their social media handle, convincing, you know, people at home here that are enjoying themselves to think that they are suffering, to come and join them there, to now have double suffering. As night reached, the man called of us, Con Shure. No one said the man even a tea daughter. Con Carol said that Shure. Con used to stay this way. Did this travel when we see what travel so? If we try and tell any of our family, she said, What did the uncle use us do for that side? Say, We go there. Without fear, all of us go cover mats. You know, go to go ask and say, how much we will pay? God knows if we raise us, say, say the, um, we will pay five, five, five hundred thousand, which is for Nigerian money. Go see, okay. The man call is us, so. God will tell us, say, once we make her, what will break up for her? Without being a say, yes, true, true, the great thing. God tell us, say, if she should first come make, Promise, give us say once we make her, I call you to a city talker. We call tanker. We discover over the years that these native doctors are those that minister oath to these victims. Before they leave the shores of Nigeria, or before they even leave their madam, or they go in agreement, they are meant to take all sorts of oaths. First of all, they have to take blood oaths. They can kill a chicken, eat the heart. They have dry gin and there are certain materials. Some even have to like, there are items they need to drop in the shrine. Like the sanitary pad, monthly flow, they drop it there. Pants, nails, pubic hair, uh, hairs on hair, they drop it at the shrine. This is, this is a control mechanism that have link on the victim. It's also instill fear on this victim and make them to be loyal to their master. Then the lawyers, at times, some of the lawyers, they sign agreement between the trafficker and the victim. When you get to where you are going, this is what you are going to pay. You need to be loyal to your madam. They sign agreements before leaving. Painful and the aspect of it is that at times, they sign agreements in ignorance, these victims. They might say, OK, when you get to wherever you are going, Denmark, you are going to pay me 500. They won't say whether it's in Naira, they won't say whether it's in dollars, they don't say whether it's in Euro. The person goes with the madam. So it has been said and signed. At the end of the day, the something has become Euro. You are paying and paying and paying and paying. When you convert it, the person has to pay, 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 till the person is worn out. At the time the person has finished paying that, the person has okay, ah, let me rest. That is when the madam will now hand the person to the authority there. You can hang them to immigration uh, uh, officers there because one, the passport is with the madam. Human trafficking leaves a sour taste in the mouth of the victims and everyone connected to her. 
a good reason why the families and the society at large are advised to be wary of actions that fuel this vice. We left Agades to Sahara Desert. On the, when we were in Sahara Desert, we faced a, a lot of challenges. We drove to somewhere that we kept for four days. Um, sometimes, there was a time we get exhausted of water. There was no water, no food. We were just there. So, some people have to urinate just for them to have a taste of something in their tongue. The effect on the victim is that it causes them untold mystery, untold hardship. It renders them, you know, uh, imbalanced. They lose their self-confidence and they are denied of every good thing of life, their freedom. They are denied, they are denied of education if they are still in that bracket. It has left countless few, um, women in fear, in despair. And, you know, it's, it robs them of their, their future and you know, restrains them from fulfilling their destinies. Human trafficking can be defeated. Many lives can be saved, but it will require the cooperation of all. Like Joan Wolfgang said, let everyone sweep in front of his own door and the whole world will be clean. It is time that we involve everybody. Everybody has to be involved because human trafficking is a social issue. It deals with your state of mind. It deals with your understanding and your plans of what you want your life to be. You want greener pastures, yes, but the, is the grass really greener where you're going to? How do I get there? What is the best way to actually get there and get what I plan on getting for myself and not what somebody else plans to get from me? So we need education. We need to educate our people, change their mindsets. Going abroad might not be the answer that you seek. The answer that you seek might actually be within your community. Then we need to get community involvement. We have communities who actually have resources within them. If you have a community, for example, that pre produces shea butter, if we can have people who will invest in those communities and you have a cottage industry, and those people are employed and they produce shea butter and you are able to even, you know, instead of exporting your human beings, export the shea butter. Is that not better for us as a nation? If every strata of society and every institution, poverty alleviation, you know, ITF does something about it. The police is doing something about it. The local governments are doing something about it. Make sure you identify this is an area we want to make sure that our youths and our children are empowered. They are engaged. Give them self-worth. Give them something to do with their hands. Keep them engaged. Maybe abroad will not be the greener pastures anymore. Nigeria might be the next best place to get to. If anybody is telling you, oh, it's 50-50, it's a lie. It's 95-5. And that five is, you are going to survive it. The other 95 is, you are not going to make it. See, I believe now, I'm not a better person than what I used to be. Because my returning back to Nigeria has really helped me a lot. Stop, Stop human trafficking. trafficking.